Hey, what's happening guys? You've seen this meter in a lot of my videos. This is the O1B35T. This is a full size, full, fun, uh, full functionality uh, professional multimeter. But what makes it really nice, and if you look right there, you see the little Bluetooth symbol. So this is uh, a true RMS multimeter with Bluetooth logging. Like I said, I've used it a lot. You've seen it in a bunch of videos. Well, O1 contacted me and they said we have a new one and it's smaller but has the same functionality with some improvements this is the 0118 b so this is basically the new and updated version of the b35t a bluetooth logging multimeter so let's check it out all right, some initial differences you're going to see from the original is the shape. It's got a more ergonomically designed to fit into your hand. And on the back, you will see it has the probe holders. Now, the old uh, B35T has a pretty nice tilting bell. And the new 18B also has a nice tilting bell. And the bells are definitely good enough in both of them to allow you, well, maybe not on my wooden desk, but th they do hold the, the unit upright. So the 18B again is true RMS, 6,000 count, 1,000 volt Cat 3. Um, it also has one of these uh, built-in transistor testers, although I don't know why. Let's see what's in the box. In the box is a card that um, gives you the ability to download the software we need to operate it with your phone. So for Android, it says scan the QR code. Uh, in App Store, you search 01. You're going to need Android 4.3 or above, or iOS 7.0 or above. Also in the box, we have a thermocouple. Okay, looks like it's good for minus 50 to 700 C or minus 58 to 1292 Fahrenheit. We get a couple of alligator clips. We get the probes, a 9 volt battery, and a little screwdriver. So I'm going to install the battery and we're going to take a look at this guy and, you know, check it out against our standard multimeter testing. Looks like just one screw for the battery door, which is nice. Don't like to have to have to do a bunch of a uh, bunch of screws when we put everything together. Okay, inside here it's marked minus positive, so we can put our battery in safely and know exactly where it goes. We'll screw it back together here. And we're ready to rock and roll. Turn her on. Yep, all right. Looks good. All right, let's start our first testing with uh, some resistance testing. So we'll just plug her in standard like that. Go to the resistance range. And let's say we start with 1K, how's that? 1.02 looks good. Then we'll swing over to 10K. 10.05 again looks really good. Now we'll go with 1 meg. 0.994. Mm. I think I think this one was closer. Let's check it. 0.995. Okay, so they're about equal. No worries there. And then we'll go for a low, and this is 2.2R, um, 2R2 rather. 
2.5 ohms. Looking pretty good there. So no worries with resistance, and I didn't really expect there to be any. I mean, we've gotten to the point where these multimeters are pretty much bulletproof in resistance and voltage measurements, but we'll test it anyway, you know, just to be sure. Okay, next up, we're going to test voltage using our voltage standard, which is this little AD584. Now, in the past, I've used this, and some guys have come up and said, well, how do you know that that's accurate? Well, you got to trust somebody somewhere. And for our purposes, for the home shop, this we're just going to call accurate. So all of my multimeters have been tested against this. And we're going to say that this is our standard for testing. So at 10 volts, we're getting 10 volts. Although it does seem to be jumping around there just a little bit. Interesting. Might be that the uh, little fluctuation off that battery. But you can see we pretty well stabilized at 10 volts there. No problem. Let's go down to 7.5. And, Lost my power lead. 7.49. Definitely close enough for anything that we need here. 5 volt. 5.014. Excellent. And our final check, if I can get these little jumpers on, is 2.5 volts. 2.506 again excellent no worries there now something i'm noticing here that i like and i just want to point this out i like the thin crispness crispness of the numbers as opposed to the chunky numbers and again that is something that i'm sure is just a personal thing but i do like it very nice. Okay, next we're going to check capacitance. We'll check both small and large. Let's start off with a little one, a little 10 nanofarad. Ten point two, ten point three, ten point four. Now it's charging up, but it's close enough for us. And then. 3300 that's a big one oops we'll see how it does there come on baby charge up 3.45 you know 33 definitely close enough for anything that we would need to be checking here now it also has a diode check function here in the resistance and continuity range so let me let me find a nice diode for us to test how about a how about an LED diode let's see what we get here I'm not even sure what color this is uh, this is a purple 2.5 working just fine and our continuity mode works real good you see we have a nice bar graph there as well everything in this range seems to be going really well next let's uh, have a look at this non-contact voltage tester this seems to be popping up a lot in uh more higher end meters like this is they've, they've always been around in the cheapo meters but now they seem to be in the expensive meters i'm up here where my lights are and you can see it's working quite well 
no worries with that whatsoever. Then we have the transistor tester. Yeah, why? I don't know. I'm not. I'm not really even going to mess around with that. All right, I figured we'd better do a quick champ, quick check of the ammeter function. So I'm gonna hook it up here to this little um, buck converter, running off the 12 volt battery, and you can see easily it's showing us 265 milliamps. No worries at all. But of course, I, I didn't expect there to be any problem there. Now this has a, a, a 20 amp fuse in it max for the regular amps, the regular uh, ammeter side. So this seems to be pretty robust. I think we've taken a good look at all of the functions. I mean, I skipped the uh, uh, the frequency and the duty cycle and the temperature functions. I mean, you pretty much know how things like that work, right? So let's get inside and see how she's built. All right, we'll start by removing the battery cover. Again, that's just that nice one screw cover on there that keeps that all together. And make sure you get that last couple of threads out. And I do not see another single screw hole. So that means we're going to have to get the holster off of it somehow which does seem to be a nice soft rubber holster there we go there's a screw hole alright this is going to take some wrangling I'll be right back so that is a nice uh, soft rubber condom they got on there seems to work out really well and that's showing four screws which I'm going to remove and you probably don't want to watch. Screws removed. And she slides right off to show us huh, the insides. Interesting. Okay. This is a pretty stark motherboard. Let's uh, zoom in. All right, let's uh, let's start with the brains of the operation. Yeah, that's that nice little chip there. That is the Hicon 12P66, which is a DMM specialized IC embedded uh, with RMS. Now, from I'm looking at the block diagram over here. And it shows it has an RC oscillator, memory timer, uh, four ports, uh, EUART, LCD driver, watchdog, digital true RMS, digital filter, P code, uh, CPU with a hardware multiplier, uh, reset, low voltage detect, switch network pre filter, temperature sensor, frequency counter, comparators, and key scan, plus all of the power goodness that you need for this. So what else are we seeing on board? Well, we're seeing our beeper. We're seeing our crystal. Whoops. Now there's some sort of interface there. Let me, let me probably zoom in and make it. There we go. Some sort of interface there that might be, a, might be able to get into. Then there is our power in. Here in, is our input section. Sadly, only one fuse for the 20 amp side. That's kind of disappointing. It does show a little bit of input protection here with these mods. We've got a uh, nice big uh, jumper here, shunt, and nice meaty diode there. So while this is not def definitely is not a uh, a flute quality. For the home gamer, uh, low voltage applications, I see no problem with it whatsoever. Uh, I'm remiss if I didn't mention there is the uh, Bluetooth section, which we're going to take a look at next. Um, I like this in a low voltage application. It, it seems very, very robust. But with the only the one the 20 amp fuse there and a couple mobs, 
you know, you're definitely not going to be one of you using this on a, say, a 440 triple phase. That might give you an unpleasant surprise. Okay, I've hooked up the, uh, the Bluetooth. Whoa, hello. <laughs> I've got the Bluetooth data logging going here. And you can see we're just hooked up to a, my power supply. Let me see if I can move my hands around here enough. And we can adjust the voltage up and down. And you can see that it tracks nice. I mean, there is a slight delay, but that's to be expected. And uh, we can bring up the data logging feature, which makes things really nice. I mean, that's what this is built for, is for that data logging. So that works out pretty sweet. All in all, I am definitely, definitely impressed with this. Um, this will be on the market really soon. I don't have a price yet. It's a nice meter. Uh, the transistor tester is a little... I don't know why they put that on there. It's really not needed, but anyway. You guys get the idea. Nice meter, true RMS, 1000 volt cat 3. I like it. If they come in with a price that's, you know, reasonable, I don't see why this couldn't be a great meter for anybody's home shop. So a big thanks to Owan for sending this out to us to have a look at. And a big thanks to you guys for watching. If you like this, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. That's it. I'm out. Peace.